So today I'm at Memorial Park Cemetery and I'm gonna take you on a journey through some more fascinating stories. I've got five stories to tell you, including the story of the Browning family that I'm standing here in front of their monument and four others, including two U.S. congressmen. So come along and join me. The Battle Creek Memorial Park Cemetery is owned and operated as a service to the community by the Kiwanis Club of Battle Creek. The cemetery lies between Territorial Road and Columbia at the intersection of Helmer Road. It is a more modern cemetery as compared to some of the original ones you'll find in the area. It has small ponds with geese, trees, and it is a frequent place for people to walk or ride their bikes. As with all cemeteries, there are many stories to tell. Let's begin our journey exploring the Browning family. We will start with looking at the life of Thomas E. Browning. Thomas was born in 1847 in County Galway, Ireland. He was the son of Michael Browning and Catherine McLaughlin. His father became a grocery man in Liverpool, England and died within a few years of moving there. His mother took her son and daughter back to Ireland and moved to America shortly after, leaving her children behind on the Emerald Island. His mother began working for the Noble family in Battle Creek, Michigan, and eventually sent money for Thomas to join her. In July of 1860, at the age of 13, Thomas crossed the Atlantic by himself and made his way to Battle Creek, Michigan. The voyage was made by the steamer Connaught, which was 11 days reaching the American port. His mother had crossed on a sailing vessel that was nine weeks in making the journey. His mother would pass away in 1870. Thomas, when he reached Battle Creek, went to live with the attorney, Leonidas Dibble, where he was given the opportunity to attend school. After a year and a half, he began working on a farm at the wage of $5 a month, and he would remain working there until he was the age of majority. So when was the age of majority in the 1800s? Well, the age of majority in the 1800s varied from state to state between age 16 to age 21, depending on the year. For example, Prior to the Willis Act of 1837, a minor who reached the age of 14 could make a valid will and dispose of property. After this act, it was defined as age 21. Later, the Industrial and Provident Societies Act of 1893 indicated a person between ages 16 and 21 could be a member of a registered society unless there was a provision contrary to that in the society that they resided, but a person aged 16 could nominate persons to whom their property could go to if they were deceased. These statutes were changed in Michigan in 1971, defining different rules from 18 to 21. So going by this law, which was in force during his time, the age of majority for Thomas was likely around 21 years old at the time, during this time period. Thomas saved his money and eventually purchased a lot within the city and built a house. He would also work for the Peninsular Railroad, which became the Grand Trunk Railroad. He worked there 25 years, serving as a fireman and as an engineer, and later he worked as a boilermaker in the shops. He married Jenny McEgan in November of 1877, and together they had three sons, Frank, Thomas, and John William. Thomas later served as a police officer, being on the force as one of the first uniformed police officers in Battle Creek. In June of 1897, Thomas then left the railroad and purchased a feed store in town. He spent many years dealing in not only feed, but also coal and wood. Thomas was a member of the Catholic Church and was long remembered as a kindly Irishman whose sunny disposition and sympathetic understanding gladdened the hearts of all that he met. He passed away on April 22, 1927. His son, Frank Browning, would go on to serve as the postmaster in Battle Creek, Starting in 1937, he married Lillian Elizabeth Weidenbach in 1907, and together they had two sons, John and Robert. Lillian would pass away in 1922, and Frank passed away in 1947, 
at the age of 69. The middle son, Thomas J. Browning, was a plumber, and he would later follow in his father's footsteps and work for the Grand Trunk Railroad. He would work there for 44 years until he retired in 1947. He too was a longtime member of St. Philip's Catholic Church, and he married Josephine Strickland in 1917. They never had any children. Thomas passed away in 1966 at the age of 85. John William Browning was born in 1888, and he became an engineer and later a director of Consumers Power and moved to Jackson, Michigan, where he worked there for 33 years. He married Nano McMahon in 1916, and he passed away in 1948 at the age of 60. Frank, Thomas J., and John William Browning are all buried at Memorial Park Cemetery. The next story I'm going to explore is that of Patrick Hart. His tombstone resides very close to the Browning family monument. Patrick Hart was born in Ireland in September of 1859 to his parents, Cornelius and Elizabeth Hart. Fleeing from the Irish famine, he and his family came to the U.S. when he was just three years old, and eventually they settled in Battle Creek, Michigan. When he was older, he recalled growing up on a farm on Verona Road. He recounted seeing the men haul lime past his house on wagons between Bellevue and Battle Creek. He remembered that they would argue politics. One would shout, Hooray for Fremont! And another would answer, And a rope to hang him! Hooray for Buchanan! The Hearts were among the first Catholic families in Battle Creek when they arrived. He described that their first services were held at the town hall before they purchased the Quaker Meeting House when he was a teenager. He also recalled attending school at the Verona School, and boys always wanted to be the ones to fetch water during school because they could go across the street to the mill pond above the Verona Dam and sneak a swim. He also stated that anyone who had a team of horses and a framed house was considered rich, as most people had a team of oxen and a log cabin. He remembered his mother sewing extra-large pockets in his clothing so that he could sneak apples into the school. He also remembered as a boy when the Civil War ended. He watched the victory parade from the roof of the Battle Creek House downtown. And the next day, he heard about Lincoln's assassination when newspapers were brought to the town by train. At the age of 15, he took up the trade of a cooper. Coopers were the makers of barrels. He became a master of his trade, along with his brother John, and they formed the Hart Brothers Firm. They manufactured barrels, tubs, etc. He and his brother could make as many as 500 barrels a day. It was a big business, as farmers needed barrels to haul flour. At one time, there were as many as 200 coopers in Battle Creek, and they all went out of business when sacks began to be used instead of barrels. After 30 years of being Coopers, he and his brother opened a cigar store on North Jefferson Avenue. Patrick never married, and after his father died, his mother moved in with him. He served as an alderman to the Battle Creek Council and worked on establishing the city light system. He also led a hard fight for the city's waterworks. He was later elected for two terms as a representative to the state of Michigan legislature. Locally, Patrick Hart was at the center of many controversies. In 1875, St. Philip's father, Siebold, tried to raise money for the church by charging rent for its pews. When Pat and others didn't pay, the priest blocked their seats with a board. Hart ripped the board off and sat down with his brother and sister, and all three were temporarily excommunicated until Father Siebold was sent to another church. He also sued Charles Livings for slander after the man accused him of soliciting a bribe. Livings' conviction was overturned on a technicality. When Livings charged Patrick with casting an illegal ballot since he was an Irish citizen and not an American, Patrick proved in court that since his father was a naturalized citizen, so was he. Patrick Hart's brothers were originally buried at Mount Olivet Cemetery, but he had them moved to the Memorial Park Cemetery when it became open, as it had become the stylish resting place of choice for many Catholics. 
He passed away in 1934 and is buried in the same plot alongside his brothers. The next story is that of Isaac Amberg. Isaac Amberg was born in 1824 near the famed river Rhine in Bavaria, Germany. His father was an enterprising businessman until later in life when he crossed the Atlantic and settled in Cincinnati. Ohio would be where he would pass away. Isaac remained behind in Germany and acquired a good practical education there and learned the trade of a tailor. At the age of 19 in 1844, he too crossed the Atlantic and arrived in Cincinnati, Ohio and lived with his brother. While in Germany, he had met Miss Hannah Summers and she traveled with him to the U.S. and they were married in Cincinnati. Over the years, they would have six children. It took him a few years after arriving in America to learn English, working as a peddler. And then he opened his own mercantile store near Cincinnati and made it a prosperous success. He then sold his store in 1852 and moved to Battle Creek, Michigan. Here he engaged in the clothing business with a partner named Julius Hausman, who later went on to become a member of Congress representing Grand Rapids. They opened their first place on Main Street in Battle Creek, which was at the time a very small village. They worked together for two years before Hausman moved to Grand Rapids. Amberg continued the clothing store for 10 years as the sole owner. And after that, he formed a partnership with Charles Peters and opened the Amberg and Peters Drug Store. Later, his partner sold his interest out to John Helmer and the store became known as Amberg and Helmer. They continued as partners for several years and at length, Amberg disposed of his interest in the company and opened his own independent drug store on his own. Isaac would eventually retire from the business and leave his son Victor in charge of his store. He had spent more than 50 years in business within the community and had arrived in the U.S. with no money at all in his pockets, and he could not even speak the language. Hannah passed away in 1885, and Isaac passed away in 1912 at the age of 88. The final two stories I'm going to explore in this collection is about two different congressmen who are buried here at Memorial Park Cemetery. The first being Paul Wernz Schaefer, who was born in 1893 in Elkhart, Indiana to John McClellan Schaefer and Sarah Wernz. His parents relocated their family to Three Rivers, Michigan, where he attended public schools in the early 1900s. He went to school at Ferris Institute, now Ferris State University, in Big Rapids, and studied law by correspondence with the Blackstone Institute in Chicago. He became a reporter, an editor and publisher of newspapers in Elkhart, Indiana, and in Bronson and Battle Creek, Michigan. He was a member of the Indiana National Guard in 1916 and 1917, and served on the border with Mexico during the Pancho Villa expedition, but was rejected on medical grounds for World War I. From 1929 to 1936, he served as a municipal judge in Battle Creek, and then he ran for Michigan's third congressional district, defeating the incumbent Werner Maine in the Republican primaries. He went on to be elected to the 75th U.S. Congress and to eight succeeding Congresses. He died on August 17, 1954, while in office and two weeks after being renominated in the Republican primaries for the 84th Congress. He was 61 years old at the time of his death. The other congressman is Harold Elliot Wolp III, who was born in 1939 in Los Angeles, California. He was raised in Los Angeles, and he received a BA from Reed College in Portland, Oregon. He later attained a PhD from Massachusetts Institute of Technology prior to serving as an associate professor at Western Michigan University from 1967 to 1972. He ran for the Michigan House of Representatives and was elected from 1972 to 1976. He was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives from Michigan's 3rd District and served seven terms from 1979 to 1993. 
During his time in Congress, he was a specialist in African politics and chaired the subcommittee on Africa for the House Foreign Affairs Committee. In 1994, he was selected as the Democratic nomination for governor of Michigan, but lost the election to incumbent Governor John Engler. He was married to Judith Ann Arts, and she passed away in 2006. Howard passed away in 2011. So that is going to do it for today's journey through history here at Memorial Park Cemetery here in Battle Creek, Michigan. If you like today's journey, please take a minute to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to check out my podcast, Tales of Southwest Michigan's Past, where I get to carry a lot more stories than I don't always have time to bring to video form. Thanks for watching.